Okay, I'm recording now. Yeah, so what I want to say is don't take this guide as the end-all be-all of how you have to play. I just want to give everyone some background on what are the most basic strategies, and then you can figure out how you can apply it to your specific team and into the future how you might do different things or... Yeah, I'm just trying to give you a framework for how to start playing this map, but the game is very complicated, and there's a lot of, lots of like further counterplay to pretty much anything I have to say. Um, let me quickly answer your question. Um, newcomer, you just need to have never played comp before, but you can have 50 hours to 10,000 hours. Um, yeah, it's probably best to start with, like, um, I don't know, start playing a bit and maybe have more than... 500 hours before you really start because you're just gonna struggle um to ever kill people who have many thousands of hours but uh yeah so let me get started here um so i'm gonna be talking about two mid fights uh and you'll see on all the slides um flank will be denoted by the yellow outline and combo will be denoted by the light blue um, I'm going to keep this at the high, highest level that I can, so, like, I'm not going to go over all of the callouts or, like, you can ask me questions and I'll clarify, of course, but, um, going to leave, like, a lot of the basic callouts and rollouts and stuff like that out of this because it's just not that relevant and the resources already exist in better forms than I could ever make. So, uh, we're going to start with the mid, which, this is the most standard setup that you see, um, You'll have your flank classes roll out from catwalk and play on the top left. You'll have the rest of your combo roll out through saw. Uh, your demo is going to get her first. And generally, this mid is very open form. Um, some things to note about the... Uh, I wasn't set up. I should have set up all the way. Um, MP... Tournament restart. Directed. Okay. Um, SV sheets one. No clip. Let's go to mid. So I'm just going to talk about the basic features of the mid. So you obviously got to see um, what I think the kind of normal setup is. But. The things to know about this mid is, like, it's a very high ground dependent mid. This high ground is really high up in the air. And the skybox is pretty high. And you can uh, do a lot of rocket jumps off these high walls. And, you know, vice versa, if there's these high bombs coming, you're stuck on this low ground. It's very hard to deal with these guys coming from so high up. So, these are the kind of basic ideas that predicate how to think about the whole mid, but there's a lot of complicated terrain, and this mid is um, one of the more interesting mids, in my opinion. So, starting off with that um, basic hold, some of the... I'll, I'll say the main strategy you look to see is either a... you're taking the initiative and doing the bombing, or you're responding, you're doing a counter bomb. So those two are the most standard for this in this mid. Um, basically, you can see how both of these soldiers have really nice positions. Uh, let me turn off no clip to jump from, sorry, there's no sound by the way. Uh, you'll just have to bear with it, uh, unfortunately. Um, the Sorry, I lost my train of thought. The soldiers have nice positions to be able to bomb from. This soldier can bomb off this roof and get really high. That wasn't even a good bomb, and I still got way up there. And vice versa, this soldier can bomb off of this thing and get pretty much anywhere onto the mid. Um, and so a lot of the mid is predicated around those two bombs, or just those like general ideas of bombs because both soldiers can kind of spring into action at any time. So, generally, if you're the stronger team, I recommend being the initiator, and if you're the weaker team, I recommend trying to respond and do the counter bombing. So, what that generally looks like is uh, 
both soldiers want to go at the same time and they'll want to count it down like three two one and then they'll jump and usually they'll land like right here go into the their sub get their pack and then they're just really annoying like if you're a soldier behind the enemy team you can shoot at them from right here you've got this nice angle like you can shoot out the door because of the right-handed rocket launcher angle and uh this is just a nice position so trying to stop the enemy team from doing this to you is kind of the basic idea of the counter mid which i'll talk about later um and then what it might look like from the opposing side is usually this counter or this bomb is going to come so as soldiers you can generally look at this and see where the other team is starting to move and then you can bomb following the original first bomb from the other team. So looking for where their soldiers are going, where their team is moving, and then looking to just bomb a bit more directly and counter their aggression with your own aggression. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, your positioning is just generally, you're looking to set up on good height. Uh, I can talk about the specific classes, of course. Um, as demo, you're going to be the first one to the mid, I'll start off with. You're looking to first exchange spam across point with the enemy demo. Then you're looking to deny a lot of high ground, so putting traps on height, putting spam onto these, um, vice versa, the flank classes will be on the top right. Putting some spam up here is always going to be, you know, fruitful for you. And um, locking down space is always going to be your job. One common mistake from demo I see a lot is getting too aggressive and walking across demo man is very you know prone to being killed by soldiers and scouts um but he has more answers to scouts than soldiers so walking forward is generally not a good idea because you can get killed from high ground and you don't have very much to say about it versus if you play a little bit more passive you can charge your stickies you can put traps and you can preserve your life um while having some like impact from range basically and letting your team do a lot of the dirty work so that's that's what i recommend on demo as pocket scout you're looking to stand on shed and deny a lot of space from their soldiers and you really want to be tracking their soldiers at all times to make sure they can't freely get on top of your demo and medic without you having something to say about it uh, vice versa flank scout it's the same idea you you need to be looking for where their soldiers are and if you can dominate uh this high ground because no one's looking at you you should do that but otherwise you're looking to again catch the bombers and try to pick off soldiers uh when possible usually as flank scout if one soldier gets killed so like say your pocket scout takes out one soldier it usually frees up your duty uh since now you have two scouts compared to their one soldier, it allows you to be more aggressive. So that's what I would look to do as flank scout. If you get a pick, you should look to move up to this forward high ground with your team. If your team is able to move forward, and then you can take a more forward position and end the mid. So yeah, that's another thing I want to talk about is how crushing this high ground is. If you can stand up here and they can't contest you, they have to leave pretty much. Soldier or scout shooting like this mid-range damage is going to be too great for them to ever have a way to play this mid. So if you can get up to the top area without them being able to say anything about it, then you're going to win the mid. Uh, next, I'm going to... So I talked about the soldiers. Finally, is medic. So when you first get to the mid, you're going to look to connect your demo. Get your demo to one... Or, uh, is it 245? Uh, 265? I forget. Um, you're going to get your demo to full buff, and then you're going to connect with your pocket scout, and make sure your pocket scout stays at 185 as long as possible. Um, you pretty much want to do everything in service of your pocket scout here, and your other goal is to have your eyes up. So say you come into the mid from here, heal your demo, you heal your pocket scout. Your main goal is to find their soldiers and keep your eyes peeled because you want to track them as much as you can so that you can avoid dying. Paying attention to them is the best way to avoid dying to the soldiers and getting surprised. So, you know, you can kite away from them this way if they're trying to go into your saw. 
and vice versa if they try to go into lower you can play more central like connect to your pocket scout and play in the middle area while they go down there they're gonna have a hard time shooting you if you're above them yeah so that's um that's about it for the basic mid plan does anyone have any questions about that Uh, I see no typing, so I'm going to continue. So the alternate mid plan is called cat, the cat mid, or um, obviously this is called catwalk. So rolling out on catwalk and doing a sort of double soldier on this left side, trying to receive the bombs and then using counter aggression later. So there's a lot more that goes into this mid than just you know, what I've presented here, and there's a lot more, like, complex counterplay, especially as you get into the higher levels, so this isn't, like, at the end all be all. Um, but the, let this be a good idea, if you're having a lot of trouble dealing with their aggression, playing the default mid, try this out, receive their bombs, use your double soldiers on high ground here to shoot their bombers, and then later walk across, take this high ground, and see if that works for you. So that's my recommendation um yeah so that's it for mid next we're going to talk about all of the holding with um all over the place this is going to be a little bit out of order but uh we'll just go slide by slide and we can talk about it so we're going to start with uh holding mid slash pushing into second so if it's even this is the kind of setup i would recommend pre-sack um usually you're gonna want to have your pocket soldier or just both your soldiers in the saw area uh they're really good at fighting in there and vice versa the scouts are better in an open space so being in this yard area or in the yard in second is going to be much nicer uh but usually in this even or sorry in the in the even situation you're going to look to do a sack which i'll talk about briefly uh, in a moment, uh, but in the add situation, you have a couple of options for pushing. So, uh, going lower is going to be better when you don't want to use the Uber, and going saw is going to be better when you do want to use the Uber. It's just the general rule. Saw puts you much closer to them and allows you to bomb into them with the Uber. I wouldn't say it's very good, but that's what you want to do. Um, and lower, you're much further away from them. It allows you to walk in uh, for free over time. And you look for kills if there are any sort of caught out players. Let me go in game. Um, you can walk lower. You can look. If there are caught out players, can I kill something on shed uh, or fence? And usually their combo will be leaving quite far away. So. Can I catch anything? If no, you just walk in, take the space, and eventually cap the point, force them away. Uh, lock out all these doors with projectiles, that's what you're looking to do. Sometimes um, sometimes there just won't be anything for you to take other than the point, and you just want to avoid getting forced if you come this way, because uh, that's kind of the worst case scenarios, like they get an uber for only... Uh, you're trading your uber for like only one or two picks sometimes. If you can trade for three or four picks, that's when it starts to become worth it. So next, I'm going to talk about um, leaving. So if you're disad or you just want to be passive for some reason, uh, but usually that's disad. I like to recommend something that isn't exactly meta, but I think should be. So what I recommend is having your pocket scout play on the enemy shed. Uh, let me quickly go over there so that I can show you what I'm talking about. So if you're Pocket Scout, you can play on the shed. You can watch lower all the way. And you have decent vision onto um, Saw. That's not foolproof because they can still obviously get in there without you seeing and they can use. But something to be aware of is you have great vision all the way down here. And... If your medic play is right here, you can play beam length, and you can both leave out of kitchen. 
which is a nice thing because it's not quite meta, so people aren't usually prepared for this idea. Oftentimes, oops, I didn't mean to do that. This one. Oftentimes, people will be leaving out of Saw. They'll play like further back here, and they'll watch from far away, and they'll leave this way. So usually, the enemy team is looking towards Saw. This can kind of subvert that expectation, but. The practical reasons are why I recommend it. You have great vision, uh, you have a nice escape route here, and the main point is your roamer can have so much impact playing deeper in saw and then moving backwards as necessary, but having your roamer spot super deep here is a uh, like necessity for this sometimes, uh, unless you know that they're going to come saw like because you don't see anything lower so having this guy spot aggressively and then potentially sacking is a good idea otherwise as demo you're looking to trap there's so many places to trap on this mid because they're looking to either come in through cat or lower or saw so you can trap places like here behind these doors uh you can trap like any of these sort of beams, pillars here. You have a lot of props along here to play with, rocks. There's so many places, corners, crevices to hide stickies. So being really creative with your traps here is really good. And then I recommend leaving out of saw this demo. And just playing height is a big thing when you're leaving. I'll talk about this all the time across many different maps, but Playing on this high ground is hugely important. So if they're coming in from lower, you're able to shoot all four of your rockets, reload, and then jump away before they can get anywhere close to you. So you want to do that pretty much every time on any map, regardless of anything. So high ground is really good, suffice to say. Then also just something to be aware of. All trying to leave out different doors is a good idea. Not getting all trapped in the same doorway. Um, so being wary of that as well. Okay. So, oh, I said passive descent. That's not what this is. This is if you're trying to sack. Uh, let me quickly... Into you. Second. Wow. Um, so... What I recommend here is a little bit involved, but, um, oops. Oh my goodness, cannot jump. Um, as demo, I would recommend, or as a team, you want to get the best sack you can, usually for one guy. So the plan here is to have your roamer sack out of window. To accomplish this plan, you need to try to deny anyone from stopping this guy from jumping out of window. The main things that will stop him are stickies or like a scout standing up on top of this fence looking right here so as a team what you want to do is like i kind of demonstrate here uh i think i flipped the rolls by accident but anyway you'll um you'll want to have one scout kind of watching passively uh and as demo you're going to want to walk lower and you're going to want to spam these people off a of fence and as scouts, you just want to protect your demo and your medic down here. As um, pocket, you'll want to just protect saw. And remember, you're going to be doing the sacking. So hopefully that seems like a good plan. You can just sack out of window. The bomb is pretty simple, but takes a little bit of practice because you got to jump off this corner. And so you can get to the pack. Um, you have a lot of options too because uh, you can bomb like more left yeah um there's a lot of space to go so making a read of where the medic is can be important as well yeah that's pretty much it for sacking so if you've got any questions feel free to drop them at any time um but i'm gonna keep moving so now we're gonna be holding second so uh, assuming they're on last, the kind of important things to know here are you want to have your demo trapping these two doors if possible, 
having players watch them. So your scout's watching lower, usually your uh, roamer is watching this top window, and your pocket is watching the store, and your medic is tanking your pocket soldier, ready to exchange on him uh, in that situation. And yeah, demo, I recommend trapping these two doors. It's really difficult for the other two classes to hold these two doors in reverse if you're the one here. So like say a roamer sex, so pretend this one of them isn't here, and you only have one soldier and two scouts to defend. If you have your demo in this door, it just becomes very difficult. You have one soldier watching this door, it means there's no explosives watching this door. Versus when the demo plays outside, he can watch both doors um, with traps. It's something that soldiers obviously can't do. Snakes. <laughs> um, yeah, let me move over and show. Yeah, obviously it's not too hard as soldier to like hold this door or hold this door, but holding both at the same time is a tall ask. And I see a lot of demos that like to play here, but ultimately you're not really getting the kind of same value for your class if you're playing up this far because you don't have that many answers against like this guy bombing you without you being able to see and vice versa if the same person like bombs here and can get out this door and starts to shoot your medic it can be a problem as well just some things to be aware of so i'll quickly talk about pushing last so oh i don't have i meant to not do that um there's obviously three doors going into last you have this left door from this perspective uh the shutter and lower Usually I refer to this as top, so like top left or top right in the reverse perspective, just to make clear it's not shutter or lower. So you have shutter is your used door. Um, lower is also kind of a used door, and top left is an, a door you don't really want to use through. It's the same reasons I talked about before. You can pop through this door because you're quite a bit closer to where their team is set up from here and because it's a shutter you're gonna go unspotted until you're right here so the normal procedure quickly talk about the uber will be a demo a scout and a medic so as demo i like to put one sticky at the door then i'm gonna count down three two one use and when as demo, I say use, the scout is going to walk through this door, you're going to depth the sticky, and your medic is going to use all at the same time. So it's going to happen in quick coordination because the shutter's got to be open, your scout's got to be ubered, and then when you depth the sticky, it'll move away any stickies that are outside the store. So you don't want to get, you know, used through here and then just get blasted straight up because there's stickies on the ground. Or... Even worse, if they have like eight stickies right here, you get skyboxed up there. Which is like, your Uber's here, and your Scout's over there, it's not going to be a great time. So, avoiding that is what you want to do, just practicing this simple, everyone goes on three, and then you go. What you want to do in this Uber is more complicated. Usually you want to either play right or play left, depends on where their team is. Their team is left, you're going to want to go left, obviously, trap that spawn, and try to trap point and play point. Vice versa, if their team is right, you're going to want to, as demo, put stickies on this door, and then trap the point and uh, play the cap on this side. If they ever go into spawn, spawn is so far away from point on this map that you want to try to cap immediately. It's pretty much the only way to win this point is trying to cap fast when they're in spawn. Otherwise, it's very difficult to win this last point. Um, pretty much, if you're not able to do that within the Uber, you can safely say, let's leave, and it's all going to be, like... If you stay in too long past the Uber, you're pretty much always going to lose. Um, because they've got a resup right here, so they can just keep resupping and eventually they're going to win the War of Attrition against you. 
hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me see what else. Is there a leaving second? No. Um, so I talked about that was the use Uber. The two um, other doors are a bit more complicated uh, for left. If they're down a, l a bunch of numbers, you can just have your whole team bus left, take this high ground, and you're looking to just win fights and eventually take them all out um, using this advantageous high ground. Finally is lower. I'll quickly talk about pushing. So lower can be nice because sometimes if you're fast, they won't expect this and you can get in quite deep. Um, especially if they're playing like top left because they're scared. Uh, they have very little vision of you until it's like far too late. So usually a left uber, you're scared of a sniper, but otherwise you want to walk in as deep as possible and then use once you get close to the point. If you can run all the way to the point without using, you've pretty much won the game. So, that is pretty much it for pushing this point. Uh, I'll talk about holding it later. Um, the other thing you need to know is how to spam the gun. Um, the most common gun spot these days is a central gun. Uh, so, seeing the sentry right here. How to deal with this is, as a combo, you want to buff both of your soldiers outside of lobby and lower. Then you're going to want to walk both of your soldiers right here and simultaneously peek this gun, but do not peek past this door. And you're going to want to both spam it. So reason being, this gun is good because it's hard to spot, but then also there's this lip here that if you peek too far, you're getting jammed in this corner. And you can't get back into this door because the gun is like pushing you back into the corner and you're basically guaranteed to die. So not peeking too far is one of the key components. Yep, that's all I want to teach you about last. So now I was going to start with the defensive side. So assuming they won the mid, now you're holding second. Um, Yeah, feel free. Again, if you have any questions, please ask. Um, here's the hold I recommend. This is not, again, everyone has different ideas for how to play this map. I'm just offering like one basic idea that will definitely be fine. And there's a lot of ways to... There's a lot of ways to approach playing this game. What are we doing? This is a map review of Snake Water. CP snake water. So what I recommend is having two soldiers hold the saw area. One of them can play on the ground or cheese, and one should definitely be on pipe. Two scouts are going to want to play on the fence to deny any bombers. And as demo, I like to play in this little doorway area, but alternatively, you can play on this like left side and move between them. And you want to watch traps in lower and window. Um... I think you're, you mean demo reviews. Demos are a different... Um, demos are like a, uh, a file in the game that you, that you record after playing them. And you can play them back in-game, and it's like the exact positions of all the players. Um, that's different from Demo Man. Um, and yeah, as Medic, I like to play in this central area. Heal your scouts on fence. Make sure they're full HP to deny their... Um, they're bombers, and then you want to heal both of these soldiers um, to be able to deny saw. I'll answer your questions later, Bruins. They're not so relevant to this. So usually they're going to be sacking into you in the even or add situation. Um, I'll tell you about one push, actually, before I move forward from this. So assuming you have some add... What you're going to want to do, this is a bit of a funny push to do, but I recommend to take your demo and scout through lower, and you're going to fake kitchen. So usually they'll have someone set up to spot lower. You're going to walk with the three of you past here to this kitchen door, and then you're going to walk back up this way. So 
this kind of convinces the team that you're going to go kitchen and use into them. And they're going to react accordingly. They're going to walk away. They're going to be scared. But instead, since they walk away and they're scared, you can just walk up through here and take the space that they give you. So taking this high ground is really important. Um, and just forcing them away without using. It's just a brief idea. Next, I'm going to talk about holding with disad on second. So I recommend this setup um, being able to sack one of your soldiers from high ground uh, if they come either door and then being able to leave. And again, it comes back to the same thing, like standing on high ground until they get all the way in and then, or sorry, not until they get all the way in. Standing on high ground when they're trying to come in and shooting spam and making it really difficult for them to just... You're just posing problems for them as they try to walk in. Otherwise, there's not too much to say about this. You're just playing passive. Oh, one mistake I see a lot is... Ugh. Um... Usually as medic, you're playing right here. And you're healing a scout in here. One mistake I see a lot is that you just walk this way. You, like, walk right and leave towards the right side. This is actually a big mistake because if they come saw or cheese, they're um, they're going to in intercept, like, uh, sorry, I should do a better jump. But, yeah, if, if they come from here and you're crossing like this, they can intercept you right here, whether from bridge or from cheese. So you really want to leave on the same side. You want to leave out left with your scout. It leaves much less opportunity for them to kind of catch you in between. That's pretty much all there is to say. So now we're going to talk about holding last. Um, so as I was talking about before, this is one of the good sentry spots. Often people call it the banny spot. Um because his team kind of popularized it. There's other good sentry spots. I would say this spot's pretty good. And um, I've seen it on, you know, these stairs. And sometimes it's on left or right as well. Um, one sec, sorry. Okay, so... I recommend holding with your demo on left... And it's kind of the same problem I talk about on, you know, second, where, like, if the demo is not watching these two doors, it means a soldier has to, and they're kind of, like, not equipped enough to deal with that sort of threat. So putting stickies on the shutter is kind of the main powerful strategy. Like, you see, I was talking about an Uber that specifically counters it, because it's, like, such a good trap to do like you always want to trap these two doors because it's just difficult for soldier to ever hold these two so i like to have uh roamer watching the lower area and pocket watching top right and as medic you just want to tank this guy usually you're gonna have you know an engineer somewhere playing in the middle the gun is protecting you and then i recommend uh either a sniper or a second or just a scout still um and the sniper can play passive and watch these sight lines, obviously, but there's also aggressive sight lines that you can utilize. So, sniping from right here down into truck is good. And yeah, you have good vision all the way across here and out into bats. Yep, so that is holding with even. Next, I'm going to talk about disad. So you kind of have a lot of ways that you can play this, but again, stickies on the shutter. I recommend two soldiers playing the right side. It allows them to kind of cycle on and off of the tower. So usually the Uber is going to come through shutter if it's going to come through. Uh, that means on the right side, there's going to be some flank players trying to get in. If you can coordinate your spam to deny those players from coming in, uh, that's going to help your team hold the Uber, basically. Meanwhile, as a combo, usually you want to set up uh, with stickies on point and play above point. So heavy medic demo, for example. Um, you can also have a sniper 
instead of a heavy. Usually this person like switches off and goes heavy as well. And obviously you'll have an engineer because you have sentries if you have time to set it up. Uh, if not, then heavy is the way. But I recommend playing above point because if they come uh, lower or shutter, you have the option to kite once they commit to a side. Obviously shutter, they're coming left so you can leave right and beat them here. But if they come in right, it allows you to kite left and you have time to play out the uh, play out the fight once their uber ends. Um, I don't think there's too much more I want to say about this. Um, yeah, I also talked about this trap. Uh, if you put the stickies on the like lower left of the shutter, you can skybox a scout like way to the right or like anyone in the Uber way to the right, which just ruins it. So definitely recommend. And that's pretty much it, actually. That's the last slide. So. Hmm. Trying to think if there was anything I missed. Maybe pushing out of last. Yeah, I missed pushing out of last. So people, well, <laughs> it's kind of a running meme that uh, you can't push out of snake water last for a lot of people. So I recommend two strategies. Um, one is using through lower and chasing through Africa or um, jumping top left. So you can either pop through this door and chase right or chase left. Uh, I think this is a bit low percentage, but it's okay. Then you also have um, this main door. So I recommend walking top right with scout and demo and popping through this door on demo, doing like a one or two sticky jump and trying to catch people in lower. Uh, meanwhile, usually as scout, you're going to look to want to jump across this train and medic as well, you're going to want to jump across and walk through the store and try to connect with your demo as fast as you can. Yeah, both of these Ubers are relatively difficult, which is, I think, why they got left out of this uh, PowerPoint originally, but not exactly sure. Um, yeah, it's definitely difficult to push out, but it's by no means impossible. And if you want to go without using an Uber, usually through Bats is the free place. Um, you get a lot of space, and you're on the highest high ground besides Pipe. So you get space to see what's happening. You can walk to point. Uh, oops. Or you can like have your soldiers get up onto height while you're doing this. And that's what I would recommend. I think that's the easiest to do if you can do it. But sometimes it's not possible. Okay, well, I guess that's about it. Um, if anyone has questions, like, leave them in the chat, and I'll get to them. But that's all. Thank you for watching.